One person can create animations like this in minutes entirely with AI. Recent releases of Kling 2.6 and Google Nano Banana Pro have unlocked five key capabilities that fundamentally change what's possible with complex 3D animation. The first fundamental shift isn't in the visual capacity of 3D animation, but it's in how the AI understands the world. In traditional ways of making 3D animations, we would have to construct reality. Every object, every scale relationship, every part of the process had to be specifically defined. But now the AI has a fundamental understanding of how the world works. That means we can create inside an existing reality. And let me show you exactly why that matters. I will generate an image using Google Nano Banana Pro for this. What we have to do is go to text image, pop in the prompt, Select the model, we'll be using Nano Banana Pro, and then generate. Now, what we're asking for here is a dissection of a smartphone. We're looking to see the interior components so we understand what could be created. Now, this is the type of image we can get out with that prompt. And you'll notice that we have every single element of the phone not only rendered accurately, but also labeled correctly. You can see here that the AI understands not only the constituent parts, but how they relate to each other. Now, this is important for a whole host of different situations, but one use case for this type of animation is showing elements expanding and collapsing. Now, we can do this with a whole range of different objects. Here is an example dissecting a sneaker, or a trainer, as we would say in Britain. Now, what I particularly admire about this is just look at the exquisite rendering of the shadow from the shoot, you can see that the shadow has also extruded itself. Now, next up is spatial awareness. And this is incredibly important if we're trying to create anything that represents the scale of real life. Now, this might be objects, but it might also be locations. Let me show you what I mean. If we're asking for a map, you can see we get a perfectly accurate depiction of the Americas here. Now you might think that that's a fairly rudimentary skill, but if we take the complexity further, we can ask for a 3D rendering of the Thames in London. And you'll notice that we get some excellent renderings with landmarks in the right places. We can see Tower Bridge here and the Gherking over here towards Bank and the Shard down here in London Bridge. So to show the power of this, and let me demonstrate what we can do with this prompt. Show these coordinates. At sunset on the 9th of November, 1989, we can get out the following image. And you can see it is the fall of the Berlin Wall. Now, what's remarkable about this is we give a specific location and a specific time, and it understands what is contextually relevant in its historical database for that moment. Let me show you a couple of other examples. We can put in these coordinates on the 21st of July, 1969. Can you guess what moment this was? It was, of course, the moon landing. Now, here's a slightly more challenging one which is midday on the 14th of July, 1789. And that was the storming of the Bastille in France. Now this is absolutely remarkable. Just with coordinates, a time of day and a date, we get a very specific scene in history. Now where things get interesting is where we start to combine all of these capabilities into one. Let me show you how that works. We can use this prompt. Create an accurate population density map of Italy using real up-to-date demographic data match the visual style of the reference image exactly, including color palette, texture, labeling, approach, and a level of abstraction. Ensure regional density differences are statistically correct and clear. Now, I also added in this image prompt, and I highly recommend in these processes that we use image prompts. That's because using a visual prompt defines the visual language much more accurately than we ever can with words. It is much easier to get to a specific idea of an image than it is to get to a specific relation of words. That's because with words, there is a certain degree of abstraction. Then we get out this fantastic chart, and you can see here we have an accurate representation of Italy, and each of the major urban population centers are showcased with the appropriate amount of population density. So you can see here, this is Rome, this is Naples down in the south, up here we have Milan. Now you might be curious, how accurate is this? Well, we can take a look at a diagram that I took from Wikipedia that is definitely true. And so if we look at the north here, you can see that we have even this small city here, which might be Turin, is in exactly the right place. It has a lower population density than Milan. And we can also track this band of different settlements 
across the north of Italy here, going all the way over to Venice. And with that, it seems remarkably accurate. Here is another example showcasing the fatalities in World War II. And we might just want to fact check this to see how close it is in to truth. So it says that the military historians converge around 7 million people. And you can see that fits in with the estimate that we have here on the graph. AI now recognizes materials, space, and data, and it's able to combine these all together. And this means that we're no longer modeling reality, we get to direct it. And this is what truly makes 3D animation usable, not just visually impressive. Once AI understands reality, the next step is understanding the way things move. And that is our second fundamental development. Now, our brains don't just judge realism by detail and accuracy. They also judge by the way things move. And that's why the physics of movement is so important for 3D animation. Now, even beautiful scenes can fall apart if the animation is off, if the motion belies reality, if things are morphing and transmuting into unrealistic designs. Now, this has been a problem for years in AI video, but we're just reaching the level now where physics is becoming highly believable for complex situations. Let's take a look at exactly what we can do. Now, to demonstrate this, we'll be using image to video. The reason for this is because we get to completely define what is the starting frame for our animation. And I'll be doing it in some kind of art list. And the reason we're using art list is because it's a place where you can access a whole host of the latest AI image models in one place, as well as the latest video models. So that means you can create both your images and your videos without leaving one site. Now, Artlist are also the sponsor of today's video. So in Artlist, all you have to do is switch to image to video, make sure you select the model that you want. Now the first demonstration that I will showcase to you is the physics of water and crashing. Now this has so many important elements to it if we want to see this glass crash to the floor. We want to see the glass reacting differently to the water. Now that might be self-evident, but getting the AI to accurately define these two completely different behaviors in one shot is immensely difficult. And water has been one of the most challenging elements for animators to work with for the last decades. So you can pop that in, we'll add a simple text prompt, glass crashes and explodes. And let's take a look at how that comes out. Now, if you do look closely, you can see some inconsistencies, but the level of physics realism allows us to believe that this is a true to life piece. Let's take a look at another water example. Here we have a huge wave crashing onto some rocks. So what we're looking out for here is that the water is sloshing about in the way we would imagine. We have some beautiful instances of the water raising up and crashing outwards. You can also see that these boats are impacted just how we would imagine they're being raised up onto the wave. With AI video, we can now get accurate representations of complex systems that make our world the way that it is. From the way that different materials relate to each other, to the way that gravity and light work. Now, this is by no means perfect, and there are certainly instances where this still falls down. I also recommend that a lot of the time, the first version that you will get out whenever you do these will not be good enough. I can show you a couple of extremely poor examples here of things collapsing. But the key here is that it is possible to get out high quality results if you know how. Let's pause and recap for a moment. So far, we've seen how AI can now understand reality, managing to comprehend materials, as well as the structures that make up different objects. We've seen how it can understand the context of our world, bringing in real life data and historical context. We've also looked at how physics can add a layer of believability to the movement. But what's interesting is what happens when we apply these consistently over time? And that's where the next capability comes in, being able to create sequences of shots that fit together. Not just individual animations that look good in isolation, but truly putting together entirely longer pieces of animation that are coherent. And that's why temporal consistency is so valuable. Now, early AI videos collapsed because you would start off with one person looking one way in a shot, and then after a couple more animations, they would look like an entirely different character. We would lose their likeness, and elements would slowly shift to be unrecognizable. 
This wouldn't just be with characters, but also objects and, and environments. But now, with the power of Nano Banana Pro, we can overcome that. Let me show you a couple of awesome examples. So for example, we can take this population density map that we had before, and if we use the prompt, remove all of these bar charts, but keep the map the same, we can get out the map without any of the bars on top. Now what's key about this is, let me overlay these two and show you how closely it maps across. We get about 99% accuracy with the outline of Italy here, which is more than above the threshold of believability that we need. Now, it is not perfect yet, but what it does do is it reaches the point where it becomes usable. It means that things do not break our understanding. It does not take us out of the immersiveness of the animation. Now, another way to look at this is if we ask the AI to zoom in on a part of an image, it can recreate that zoomed in part with exquisite accuracy. And that allows us to then animate between two frames. And this is the basis of advanced 3D animation. So here we can take this map of London and we can zoom in just a tower bridge. And then if we animate between these two frames, we get this beautiful transition where we're gliding through in an almost drone-like way to get this close-up shot of Tower Bridge. Now, this is the fundamental way that we can work through these elements. Let me show you another interesting way that we can do that. Now, we have the Australian Open Tennis Tournament starting later this month, and we can get a 3D rendering of one of the stadiums in use. And then we can ask it to zoom in onto the court, and we can get that out here. Now, where we can start combining these elements together is we can then animate a graph on top of the court, just like this. Now, what's so exciting about this is that we're keeping a beautiful visual language between the shots. It's not just that we're keeping the objects and the stadium the same, but we're also keeping the colors, the style, and the coherence of the piece. Now, here's another example of how we might use this for a current event. Alex Honnold is soon to be climbing without ropes the Taipei 101 building. So we might make a graphic representation of this. Here we have that tower, and then we can show him climbing up it, zoomed in. And we can animate between these two frames to showcase the entire concept of what it's like to be a small, tiny man climbing this huge skyscraper. Now, temporal consistency really opens the door for storytelling, documentaries, and creating longer pieces of work. If you have dreamed of creating a YouTube channel or your own documentaries, this is now possible. Allowing these objects and environments to persist over time, we can create entire realities. Now this also opens up the door for some very interesting and creative applications. One of my favorites is a camera orbit like this. Without this, nothing becomes production ready because consistency enables storytelling. And we are storytelling creatures. And unless there is a clear story, we don't care. Now all of this is looking great. We've got lovely images, they're moving together, and we've even got sequences of shots. But this will all fall apart if they don't look good close up. And that's where the next development in AI video is allowing us to create production ready creations. Now, we've been used to having very low resolution AI video. And if you look at it closely, you'll see that it's blurry and morphing in the details. We would perhaps try to overcome this by putting it through extensive upscalers, but that would only clean up the image rather than adding more detail. But now we're starting to get much higher resolution AI video. Currently, Google VO 3.1 is generating images at 720p. But what's particularly exciting is the latest version of Kling, which is giving us videos in 1080p. Having this and a much higher resolution is giving us greater capacity to have details. You can see here that we have just these tiny specks of dust that really start to add to the quality of the scene. It means that where we have the detailed typographic renderings here, we can still maintain legibility even when the words are very small. So you can still see this says Pirelli. But one of the even more challenging things than resolution for AI has been text rendering. And that is the ability to have highly legible text even when it's minute. Now, this is an element that appears so frequently 
in our lives, it's incredibly important that we can accurately represent it. Now, beyond that, for creating usable, educational, and informative 3D animations and diagrams, labeling is essential. Now, this opens up the door for journalism, analysis, and explanation. So we could take the earlier example of our population density map of Italy, and we can ask it to be annotated. And here you can see we have each of the cities accurately labeled with a consistent font. Now, this is extremely important because now we can go from the blank map to the map with the graph, and then we can add the labels on top. And this ability to build it up layer by layer means that we can explain it verbally or with a voiceover extremely clearly as we talk through different elements. Now, we can also see here in this smartphone extrusion, we can see each of the elements with these tiny little labels, aluminium frame. And you can see every single one is pointing to precisely the right piece of the phone. Now here's a fun experiment where we can take this even further just to push the possibilities of this text rendering. And that's where we can create entirely bespoke fonts for different situations. Now this is incredibly useful because we can then create a font for a project and then reuse that as an image reference for every shot in a sequence. That way we get consistent typography across our whole series of animations. So for example, you can say something like this, create a professional font specimen sheet for this font, including uppercase and lowercase letters, numerals, punctuation, weights if applicable, and sample text. Then I popped in these two image references, one of a example, style and one of a font sheet. And you can see here, we get out this beautiful series of letters. Now, what we can do is we can take this, use it as an image prompt and say, write these words or these labels or this heading using this exact font. And that way we can maintain perfect typographic consistency across our work. Now, this is the kind of thing that adds a real level of polish. It's not the thing that you obviously notice between shot one and shot two, but subconsciously it adds this layer of consistency, of detail, of branding. This is where communication completes the medium and it allows us to create complex sequences of animations just like this. Now, individually, these capabilities are highly impressive, but together they fundamentally change the reality of what's possible with 3D animation. We can now create long extended narrative pieces that it can explain complex situations. And we can apply this to a whole series of situations, everything from news content, to advertising, to explaining educational concepts. It's truly interesting because for me, it's transforming the nature of 3D animation. 3D animation is no longer a technical discipline anymore. It's becoming a highly creative one. The bottleneck isn't expensive software, high quality computing, and understanding extremely technical pieces of software. What matters now is having an important story to tell and a beautiful sense of taste. Now, if you want to experiment with everything that you've seen in today's video, today's sponsor makes that extremely easy. Now, I've also added in every single prompt that I used in this video in the link in the description, as well as all of my images, which you can use as image prompts to get similar styles to some of the things we've been experimenting with. But today's sponsor is Artlist, and it's great because they allow you to access a whole host of different image and video models all in one handy place. Now, they are constantly adding in new video models and you always get access to the latest tools. You can try Artlist today and the link is in the description below. Now, if you enjoyed this video and you want to dive deeper into the AI rabbit hole, watch this video next, which is all about how AI is transforming the field of graphic design.